Chapter 3, Certainties. Taylor had been in and out for days. They had been injecting him with something twice a day, and he could not quite get his head about him, although the cobwebs had now begun to clear, because he had noticed they had not given him his shot. He looked up. Where am I? He asked. No talking, the guard snapped. Man, you said that last time. Fuck that, Taylor said defiantly. Where am I? New York, the center of it all, the guard replied, but grimaced knowing he should not have said anything. He'll be down soon to see you, he said with a snap. Who's coming to see me? Taylor asked, but this time the guard thought twice and did not answer his question. Pee on, Taylor spurred, but the guard didn't bite. So Taylor sat, his head clearing more and more. He sat in the horribly uncomfortable wooden chair, waiting for his not-so-gracious host. My butt hurts, Taylor grumbled. The guards did not react that he could see. However, one guard smiled a bit at the comment. Both guards had heard rumors of who this Taylor was. Some kind of super vampire, some had said. And one rumor even said he was the son of Tanar, Raynar's brother. Since no vampire had ever conceived a child before, most wrote that rumor off to be untrue immediately. In fact, both were true. Taylor was something that the world had never seen before, and the reason he was tied up here now was because he was one of the few threats his uncle had. The door opened with a whoosh. In strode a young man not much older than Taylor. He even looked a bit like Taylor. He walked over and flashed his fangs at Taylor in a wicked smile. Well, your little resistance was cute, but I think all hope is lost for you now. His uncle said, making a small, wicked bow to Taylor. Then you don't know much about hope, Taylor snapped back. That, my young nephew, is true. I deal only in certainties, he said back in a smooth and calm voice. Well, you can certainly know that the minute I get a chance, I will certainly rip your heart out, Taylor snapped, the anger in him boiling over. Ah, why so aggressive? Have you been so mind-washed by your father and thranked? He spit the names out with disgust. I know the truth, uncle. And even if I'm wrong, it doesn't change the fact that I will soon rip your heart out, Taylor said. Then I suppose we won't be able to allow you that opportunity, he said with a sly smile on his face. They will stop you, Taylor said, mustering all his strength. No, they won't. They won't even be fighting me. They'll be fighting hundreds of thousands of disposable vampires. And yes, they may cut through some of them, but they'll never win against those numbers, I promise you, he said. My father will come, Taylor said, a little less conviction in his voice. No, Taylor. That, I can assure you, won't happen. Your father was weak and is still weak. He never stood up to me once in our lives. Renard replied in a silky smooth voice. Taylor shook his head with denial. You won't win, Taylor said. Oh yes, Taylor. Most assuredly, I will win. Even if your friends survive the first wave, they will have to deal with my real army. Thousands of the most experienced, trained killers. Even if they get past the masses, then the real fight will have only just begun. And that battle... I'll be there. Well, how very Bond villain of you to tell me the whole plan. Taylor snapped back. This got him slapped across the face. Another certainty I have is that you will do nothing about it, he said, rubbing his hand. You better hope so, Taylor snapped, and he got backhanded the other way across his face. His uncle turned on his heel and strode out the door, and it shut with a hiss.